Hey there, thank you so much for stopping by. Really do appreciate it. Uh, I've got a project I've been wanting to do for a little while and thought I would make a quick video about it and bring you along for the ride. So I've had a Zima blade since before they even were, were first released to the public and I made an unboxing video of it, uh, live stream, I guess is actually what that was, and had lots of plans to make other content and didn't. Um, but now, now I've got, now I've got some content that I want to create and I want to use this Zima board, uh, to set up a little Proxmox server just, just cause I can. And I wanted to take you guys along for the ride. Uh, so let's take a look at the little hardware setup we're going to use, and then we'll jump into getting Proxmox installed on a Zima blade. Okay. So this is the Zima blade that I'm going to use. Uh, this is the four core, four thread version, uh, with eight gigs of DDRL three in there or 3L, I don't know, whatever, but it's got eight gigs of RAM. Uh, there is a 16 gig module available from Ice Whale now for like 40 bucks, and I'm really thinking about getting that. Uh, I've got this in a 3D printed enclosure that I found online. Uh, I printed it yesterday, didn't take long, but that's um, that could be completely dependent on your printer versus mine. Um, but I'll put a link to this little, uh, this little enclosure in the video description. Um, and yeah, so underneath it's got two, oops, can we see them? No, we can't see them. Uh, we've got two uh, SSDs in there. Uh, both of these are one terabyte drives. We're gonna use that for storage. Um, and that, that's basically it. I am though going to have to use uh, a little breakout board uh, to plug into the PCI Express slot there so that uh, I can have more than just the one USB port while we're doing the installation. But that's, that's an issue directly with this, maybe not with your setup. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use uh, I've got two of these. Uh, this, uh, one of these is a 128 and one is a 64 gig. I'm going to use the 128 gig uh, version of this that I've got as my Proxmox boot drive. And I'm going to use the 64 gig for, uh, for my installation media for Proxmox. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I've got going on here. Very simple, very, very small little package. I actually really dig it. I like this little case. I had to modify it a little bit to get it to work. Uh, you can see there and there and over there, and then I sanded it. Um, that's why it looks like this on this end. But this is what I'm gonna use uh, for for this little setup. I had it laying around, hadn't really made any content other than the uh, the unboxing live stream that I did when I first got it. So I thought, let's, let's do something fun with the Zima Blade. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the hardware we're gonna use, uh, the next thing we need to do is actually get our boot media configured. And of course, the first thing we have to do before that is make sure that we've got the most current ISO of Proxmox. So let's jump over to my desktop and get that taken care of. So here we are on proxmox.com. Uh, all we've got to do here is just go to the downloads page and then we can just download Proxmox VE 8.2 ISO installer. Of course, that's going to vary uh, depending on when you watch this video, that number may change. You'll just want to go with the most current version and hopefully they haven't changed it too much by the time you see this video. So what I'm going to do, just click download. We're going to give this, um, a little while to go. And once it's done downloading, we'll come back and get our bootable media created. Okay, so now that we have our ISO downloaded, we need to actually create our bootable media. To do that, I'm just going to use, uh, there's a little little USB here. That I think this is 64 gigs. It doesn't need to be that big. It's just what I've got laying around. Uh, and I'm going to use Rufus here uh, to do my, my media creation. I've used it in the past and it works really well. So that's what I'm gonna use. Um, I've already got it downloaded. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna minimize my, my, my browser there and bring this right up to the middle of the screen. I'm gonna plug this in to my uh, local USB port right there. And then I'm going, uh, uh, well, that's, that's, that's technically the device. I installed Tiny11 on my PC in the other room the other day, and I'm gonna reuse this. Oh, sorry, I lied, it's a 128 gig, still doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, disk ISO image, please select. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, for my ISO, I'm gonna go to my downloads and I'm gonna do Proxmox. Uh, but it's creators have not made it compatible. So as a result, a DD image writing mode will be enforced. That's cool. That's what I really like about Rufus is it does a great job of being like, hey, we noticed this thing, but we got you. We're gonna take care of this for you. I'm gonna click okay. Uh, and once I've done that, I'm just gonna click start and say, hey, everything on this USB device is going to be destroyed. Are you sure? I am, so I'll click okay. We're gonna give this a couple of minutes to do its thing. And then once it has created the bootable media, we'll move over, get this plugged in and actually log in to our device so that we can get Proxmox installed. While we're waiting, I thought this would be a good time to mention that if you enjoy this kind of content and this video specifically, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But with that said, it looks like our ISO has been uh, converted over to a bootable USB. So let's go ahead and grab that, put it in our device and get it booted up. Okay, so this no 
blue signal screen is actually my tiny pilot. We're gonna use that just so we can make sure we can see everything using my normal capture card. It was weird. So uh, I'm gonna use the tiny pilot here. Uh, and now I'm gonna go ahead and just get the power plugged in to my Zima blade. And we're gonna give this a minute. Hopefully the screen will flicker. We should see a, a Zima logo. There it is. I'm gonna start tapping delete uh, because I wanna get into the BIOS just so that I can go over to the boot screen and uh, change uh, my my boot order. This is this is all wrong. I'm gonna do this. Um, we're gonna do we're gonna do that. I think. Um, and then for boot option two, um, we're just gonna do USB. We're gonna try that uh, to make sure everything works. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and do um, save and exit, and then click save configuration. Grub is loading, this is good, we're glad to see this. Okay, there we go. So now we've got a couple of options. I like to be lazy, uh, for me anyway, and use the Proxmox graphical installer, so that's what we're gonna select. Okay, so uh, you should read the uh, the EULA there, the end user license agreement. And if you agree, come down here and click I agree. Um, and then we're going to select our uh, bootable media, hopefully, Right there, this SB or SDC, that's our SanDisk. Um, hopefully you can see that, but that's the, the other thumb drive I'm gonna use uh, for the sake of this installation. And I'm gonna click next. Country, uh, United States, like so. Yeah, that's weird, but okay. Um, and then we're gonna scroll down. I'm near Denver and that's good enough for me. I'm gonna click next. Password and email address. Next. Okay, this happens periodically and I don't understand why. Um, this IP address, well, I tell you what, let's do, we're gonna do uh, Zima procs like so, cause I am lazy. So as I was trying to say here, this IP address here isn't correct. I don't know why, um, but since the release of the eight, um, series of Proxmox. This just randomly throws in whatever IP address it wants. So I'm gonna have to go back and take a look at what IP addresses I know that are available on my network and select one of those. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come right back and we'll move on. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I've got an IP address that I can use. So I'm just gonna go ahead, zero dot six. I know I can use that one. So that's what we're gonna use. Uh, and then we're gonna, oops dot zero dot one for the gateway and the DNS server will be uh, 1.1.1.1, like so. Cool, so this is, again, this is something I've noticed on the eight series of Proxmox where it just doesn't recognize that it's plugged in. Uh, it doesn't pull a DHCP address or anything. I don't know what the logic is behind that, but that's just something that I've noticed. So just something to be aware of. So now I'm gonna click next. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Uh, Zima Prox, I forgot. Do I need to do like a local? That's fine. And next. And hey, are you sure that this is what you want to do? This all looks good to me. So I'm going to click install. So at this point, uh, it's going to go through its installation process. This will take a few minutes um, and then uh, we'll kind of approach things as they come up. Um, and then we'll actually get logged into our Zima Blade Proxmox setup here in just a couple of moments. Okay, so here we are about 12 minutes later and it has done what it needs to do. Uh, and now it's rebooting, uh, even though I didn't really ask it to. So uh, I'm gonna get back into uh, my, my BIOS here. Uh, uh, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this, oops. And it says it's gonna boot from USB, so uh, let's see what happens. Grub loading, that's good. Make sure all of this works, and um, and then we should be able to get logged in. Hey, this is looking really good. I'm really excited about this. It's thinking. Now keep in mind, this is a very low power device with four cores and four threads and eight gigs of RAM, so it's not going to be super lightning fast. Um, and of course, this is a first boot, and those always take a little longer, so. There you go. Okay, there we are. It looks like our Zima Prox is ready 
to go. So now we can quit doing everything uh, via the capture over here and we can jump into a browser window and actually do this for real. And I was just gonna jump right into that without saying, hey, look, what, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to the, the URL that it's got up there, the HTTPS, the S is important here, the page won't load without it. Uh, and then the IP address we gave it and then port 8006. So that's what we're gonna go to in our browser window. I thought I should mention that. Okay, so I put in the IP address and the port like we talked about. And here it says your connection is not private. What do you wanna do? Well, I wanna click advanced and then I wanna click proceed. Um, and then I wanna go ahead and get logged in with the username of root and the password that I set up during the installation process. And it says, hey, you don't have a valid subscription for this server. There are hacks and things that we can do, scripts we can run. That'll be in a separate video. I just wanna get a basic setup done here. So the first thing we wanna do here is actually get our storage configured. Um, and again, we've got the 128 gig boot drive on the USB. We've also got two one terabyte drives that we wanna get set up uh, so that we get the best possible speeds that we can out of our storage. Okay, so what we're gonna do to get our storage configured is a couple of different steps. The first thing I wanna do is come up here to where it says Zima Prox or whatever you named your node. And then I wanna come over here to disks and I'm gonna see SDA and SDB. Those are my two uh, one terabyte solid state drives. Uh, just to make sure that everything works appropriately, what I wanna do is click say SDA and click wipe disk and say yes. And then we'll do the same thing with SDB just to make sure uh, that those disks are wiped and ready to be used for our storage configuration. Now, once we've got this done, what we can do is come down here to where it says ZFS and there's nothing in here, which is good. I'm gonna click on create ZFS and then I'm just gonna call this storage like so. Now I'm gonna select both of my devices here. And then up here where it says single disc, I'm going to select mirror. Now you can select any of the options that fit your hardware requirements and the needs that you have for your setup. But for the sake of simplicity and the way I'm gonna set this up for myself, I'm going to use two discs and I'm going to use mirror mode for this. Uh, once I've got that done, I can go ahead and click create. Give this just a moment. And there we go. Now we have our storage configured so that we can use it in our upcoming projects. Okay, so there is one more thing that I wanna do just so we're prepped and ready for our next video where we're gonna take a look at some stuff I've been wanting to take a look at for a while, like how I set up my templates and that sort of thing. So in order to do that, we're going to need to have uh, some templates available to us so that we can create our, our containers and that sort of thing. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna come back over to here, we're gonna go to uh, our, our node and then we're going to go to shell. And there we go. So this is our Proxmox shell. Uh, we're gonna do a couple of commands. The first one is going to be an update. Uh, think of it like when you do like a sudo apt update and then you run your commands uh, for upgrade and that sort of thing. We're gonna do basically the same thing, just a little bit differently. It's gonna be PVEAM update like so. Cool, update was successful. It's not giving us any information there, uh, saying that there are updates available. So that's good. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is PVEAM um, and then uh, available. And this is going to uh, throw a whole bunch at us right here. Now, this is where we, we can download the files that we're going to need so we can create containers and that sort of thing. Uh, what I wanna do actually is scroll up. I like to use uh, Debian, whatever the most current version of Debian is, uh, but the turnkey core edition for my templates, for my, for my containers when I'm building them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this so that I've got it. And then I'm gonna do a uh, clear. Uh, and then the next command that I'm gonna run is PVEAM download and then local, cause that's where I want it to, to store everything is locally on the local storage. Uh, in fact, if we come over, do, 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 if we come over to here and go to storage right here, it's gonna download it to this local storage right there. You could put it on storage if you wanted to, completely up to you. In fact, no, you can't because we don't have this set up for ISOs. It's fine. I'm just gonna put it on local. That's where I always put uh, my templates when I download them. So we're gonna come back over to here. Uh, we're gonna do um, PVEAM, download local. And then I'm going to paste in um, the Debian 12 turnkey core 1801.AMD64TAR uh, JZ like so. I'm gonna enter. Cool, so now it's actually downloading uh, that container template so that we can launch our first uh, Proxmox container. 
Okay, so there we are just a couple of moments later. We've got our template downloaded. So now let's verify that it's there. There are a couple of different ways that we can do this, but the way I find that it's easiest anyway, is we're just gonna come up here to create a container up in the top right-hand corner. We're gonna click there. I'm gonna give it a password like so, and we're just gonna give it a, a quick name here. We go to template, uh, we can select our storage, but remember we stored this in local. So right there is our turnkey core 1801. So we know that we're set up and ready to go for that. And because I know somebody is going to go into the comments and say, but there's another way to do this. You're right. Let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, you can just go over here to local, wherever you stored it, uh, wherever you stored that template on your on your storage. Again, I put it in local. You can go over here to CT templates. And right there is also where you can see whether, you're, whether your containers are available or not. Same thing with ISOs same things with backups. All of this stuff is available by just clicking on the storage over here. And then you can see all of the different uh, things that may be available in each of those individual pieces of storage. But again, if we click local and go to CT templates, right there is also our Debian 12 container template. Okay, so there is the basic setup for the first part of this little series. I've been wanting to make uh, some different content, but I wanted, I, I felt like I kept trying to chase the content that I really wanted to create without setting up the foundation. And that's what I wanted this video to be, it was kind of the foundation for setting up Proxmox so that we can then go in and do some more fun stuff in future videos. But in this video, uh, we got our hardware set up, we got Proxmox installed, we got our storage configured, and we've got a template downloaded so that we got some prep ready for our next videos. Of course, if you're interested, like I said earlier, in this content and this type of content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, you can support the channel by doing those things, or if you'd like to take it a step further, you can become a channel member or a patron. Uh, both channel members and patrons get access to my content with no ads in them. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and you can get that for like as little as a dollar a month over on Patreon. So if you want to, great. If not, totally get it. No obligation there. But I think uh, with all of that said, I do want to go ahead and wrap this up so you guys can go back to whatever you've got planned for the rest of your day. Uh, thank you again so much for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will talk to you in the next video.